appreciate the candy. Yeah, I appreciate your restraint, <laughs> Sherry. You didn't eat yours. I did. Well, at least half of it. I'm going to share the rest with Lap. Our starting lineup, so it's where you're placing Martin in the starting lineup. Jordan Hawkins, the freshman from Gaithersburg, Maryland tonight, getting his first career start. RJ Cole coming off 26 points in the win against VCU. We talked about Phillip and London and Styles, all for Jason Crafton in his third season at Maryland Eastern Shore, but really more like his second because they are one of the teams that did not play last year, gutted out the win against VCU. You know, you had a double overtime, you have a tough loss against Michigan State, then you come back to play awful against VCU, and that's important. Good teams have to win games sometimes when they play poorly, and that was one of them. And ruin three games in three days, plus the travel. What concern now his team comes out tonight against the team in Maryland Eastern Shore that they certainly have a size advantage over two and four on the year. Inside is Sonogo, and he picks up where he left off. That's going to be a problem tonight. They are so huge. You saw that jump ball, Adama Sonogo absolutely towering over uh, Deshaun Phillip, who's the point guard for Maryland Eastern Shore. It's going to be very tough in the lane for Maryland Eastern Shore tonight. Here's Dom London. You mentioned Phillip Moore, their guard two years ago that played as a scoring guard, now has shifted roles. Get an offensive rebound, Nathaniel Pollard. Good body control for the first bucket. I mean, the fact that they get an, get an easy basket like that, which is going to be hard to do in this game, that's a good sign for Maryland Eastern Shore. They're going to be gritty in this game. There's no doubt about it. They're all about tenacity. They're all about their aggressive nature. They told us all about that today when we have conversation with Coach Crafton and a couple of the players as well. Program that was picked to finish dead last coming into the year in the MEAC. Well, let's face it, you don't play at all last year, and now all of a sudden you come in, you only have two guys that were in this program two years ago, so it's everybody's brand new except for two guys. And the inbounds to Whaley. Air Whaley did not play against Michigan State after fainting at the end of the Auburn game. Came back and hit some huge buckets against VCU. Well, you mentioned the two guys for the Hawks who were in the program in the 1920 season. Yeah, Phillip and Voiles. These two guys were the two guys that were here two years ago. So this program starting all from scratch. Cole with the elbow jumper. He was the only consistent scoring against the Rams on this weekend. Yeah, he had a really good game. 24 points against VCU. Played great in that game. Having a very good season. He was the player of the year in the MEAC when he was there two years ago. Foul was called on Jordan Hawkins, which will send Shore to the free throw line. Or three years ago, because he sat out two years ago and played last year. Approaching 2,000 points for Cole. So that'll send Voiles to the free throw line. Junior from King Charles, Virginia. Did not play 20 minutes against Liberty on Saturday. The first time that hasn't happened all season. This team is going to mix it up defensively. The one thing they can't do is play, give a steady diet of man-to-man -man because you saw what Danny Hurley did. He threw the ball into Sonogo twice right at the start of this game. Here's another mismatch. Not that Andre Jackson won't be a mismatch for a lot of teams around the country. Hawkins on the drive. And the double coverage. Hawks come away with an opportunity here for an early lead. And I think trying to push it and see if you can get something early helps. You don't want to have to set up against, because UConn defensively, they've been amongst the defensive leaders in the country, and they haven't, they played a pretty good schedule. This is a nice block shot here. This kid Hawkins is going to be a very good player. Just needs to get a lot more time. They're very high on that freshman. Styles, their leading scorer, got to the elbow. Body got hit in the rebound from Jackson second. And this is UConn. UConn wants to play fast. They're one of the faster playing teams in the country. So far, Maryland Eastern Shore has done a good job getting back when they've tried to do that. Yeah, you, you can't give this team easy baskets because you're going to have enough of the time keeping them off the glass and protecting the paint. You can't let them score on you in transition. And that was the conversation this morning. If we don't get back in transition, we might as well not even show up in the building. And I think number two is if you don't rebound. See, that was good defense. They got Sonogo. He got the ball. He started out with a 10-footer. He ended up shooting a fadeaway jump hook from 12 feet. That's exactly what Maryland Eastern Shore wants them to do. Oh, they'll live with that, too. No easy buckets yes. so far here in the early going. 
and the tempo's good right now for them. Pollard, good look into the corner for Styles on the drive. Pollard kept control of possession. Tough shot. And the Hawks have an early lead. I like the patience, and I think that's good. You gotta look to run if you can, but if you don't have it, then you have to be patient and slow the game down. Right now, the tempo that they are doing is very good for Maryland East Control. And again, UConn playing without Tyree Spartan is one of the most important parts to this roster. And Sherry told us out with a left wrist injury. Cole in the corner. Knocks in a triple. This kid is so steady. He's been so good for UConn. He's a true point guard. They have two point guards. Gaffney comes off the bench that have over two to one assist to turnover ratio. Two of them, and those guys will play together. Extra pass and an open shooter for three. Deshaun Phillip, 13 preseason. Old Miak has gotten off to a slow start, but that's a big shot early and a great job going inside and out. Elgo's going to have the height advantage over anybody who's on the floor tonight. Yeah, and he loves going to that left shoulder. As you can see, so far he's going to that left shoulder three times. So he's got four. Cole's got five. UConn back in front by one. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Hawks go into a little zone next possession. And he found himself in trouble. And this game to bow him out with the freshman on him. On the drive through the lane. Jackson might have gotten a piece of it. It's foul called on London. Well, they're not a high-scoring team, but getting some good looks. No, but they're doing what they need to do so far in this game. Great inside out. Knock down the three. The Hawks down one to the Huskies. Thing when they went down there. I mean, let's face it, the first four games was definitely a warm-up, and that's why you can take the stats and throw them out the window. But what they did those last three, that was a step up in class, and they easily could have come away from their three and oh. That was a grind. Two, two a double overtime and an overtime game. Not easy. Baylor won the battle for Atlanta's beating Michigan State by 17. Baylor, how low are they compared to last year? Not not much worse than they were last year, but they lost a lot from last year. Butler and Davion Mitchell, but I'm telling you, that team can win it all. I was ultra impressed with Ben. Seven on the timer. Hawkins. Top three. That's what they want. Make them shoot the perimeter jump shots. Don't let them throw it inside if you can. And try to keep them to one shot. And they've done a good job of that so, so far in the first five minutes. That's the game plan. And the other part of the game plan, got to make some threes. Here's an opportunity for Styles. It's another. He listened. He's well, very coachable. He was only 15 feet in front of him. Yeah, he did hear it. He must have heard it. He was right in front of us. Is right. What a shot that was. And this team makes eight threes a game, but they're not a great. They're 33% from three. They're not a great three-point shooting team, but they shoot them. It was only his fifth make from three all year. Inside is Sonogo, and this again is going to be a problem. Wow. He didn't make that. I mean, that's one, obviously, he's got to make double came and then the double left, and then a little slow getting back. Style very aggressive offensive rebound for Pollard. Lost it in the lane. Three on one. Jackson took flight, laid it in. This kid hasn't been able to show what he has. Either he was hurt most of last year, so <laughs> that's easy to say, hard to do. Let's see if they can do that. That is not going to be easy. Well, and as, as you are, if you are as big of an underdog in a game like this as the Hawks are here tonight against Danny Hurley's team, how how many segments of a game do you think of? Do you think in four-minute chunks? Absolutely. It's four, they, and they, have, they did great the first four minutes. They got to keep every four minutes and be close. The main thing is to stay in it in the first half, and then anything can happen. Lob. Oh, and Gaffney off the bench. Open three, and that falls for Tyler Polly. Not a lot has fallen for him the last two games. 0 for 10 after having that big game against Auburn, where he had 24 points in uh, the Bahamas. He had six threes in that game against Auburn. That's a good sign for Danny Hurley. Tough shot. Styles made it, their leading scorer. This guy can score. A couple of seasons at Monroe College. Now in his first year with the Hawks, part of the new roster they have. And now UConn going with the two point guards. They both can shoot, so you can play these two kids together. 
Another point guard down low to Whaley. Jackson had a tap to round, and it's controlled. Cohen Thompson, the junior from Memphis, who has given them huge minutes. And so far, what they've done well, they're they're dominating the defensive glass, which is obvious. Yeah, and that, that making shots like that helps. But they're keeping UConn to one shot. Cole in transition, well off the mark. Great look in the finish. Jackson, the no look to Cole as the cutter. That's a terrible pass. That was a bad decision there. Trying to settle in this game of just one here. Eight and a half minutes gone by. Someone's got to stay in front of RJ Cole. Yeah, no doubt about it. But that was a little bit too easy. Probably a good time for a zone. Getting beat off the dribble, not good. And it's time for timeout. Jason Crafton takes it, and that'll send us to a break as well. Trying to keep UConn at arm's length here on the road. On the HBCUs, UConn's going to play Grambling coming up here in their next game here in just a few days and, and we're getting a lot more of that throughout the country yeah i think it's a great thing you know to uh, highlight these schools what they do uh it's a tremendous opportunity for these kids to showcase what they have to be on cbs well and here tonight maryland eastern shore playing very well tuka nugent to the bucket his second field goal in the opening half they're playing great and now i kind of figured that they would try to show the zone, but not yet. They like what their man-to-man -man looks like, which, you know, it's been good. Those are the shots you want them to take. That's a bad foul. You never want to foul a three-point shooter, ever. Owen Thompson called for his first. Yeah, I mean, that's just not a good foul. So it'll send Tyler Polly to the free throw line. Biggie sixth man of the year last season at seven and a half points per game. And as you were talking about, good three-point shooters. Been struggling a little bit of late after that Auburn game, but he saw one go through the here in the first half. But a great guy to have. He, I mean, he's been here forever. This is his fifth year. I, mean, I remember. It's like I, I feel like I've been watching this kid for the longest time, which I had. So he's another fifth-year guy. Uh, he was a starter his first couple of years after the coaching changes became more of a guy coming off bench And he's leaped because he's a tremendous three-point shooter to me the kid who just came in a cook a cook He is a huge key to this team. He's never I mean he tore his Achilles last year So he lost that almost the whole year, but he is one of the best shot blockers in the country when he's healthy He can really help them as a sub for Sonogo. Well, and, and he Danny Hurley said today as right off the gate a cook a cook almost got the steal He's got to score. He's got to give them something on the offensive end. Played 30 minutes in the Bahamas, zero points. He doesn't really have much of an offensive. Oh, that one could have been a travel. Doesn't have much of an offensive game yet. And they're playing the two big kids together now, which is odd because neither one really can shoot threes. Probably a better three-point shooter. He is a better three-point shooter, but look, they just throw right into the box. Here's the offensive board. And just on cue, they wanted the aggressiveness. They wanted to see him get involved, and right away. Well, they weren't dominating the offensive glass. Now they got the two bigs in the game. Now it's going to be really tough. I mean, it looks is it, it looks like the Hawks are playing really good, which they are. They're down five. Yep. <laughs> and it, it goes quick too. And they're taking tough shots. Sonogo almost knocked it out of bounds. Akinsanya off the bench saved it. Whistle. What happened there? They lost me on that. It's possible shot clock reset. Not sure if that was a change of possession or not. You know, you I want I mean this team that UConn has in the game right now is huge. I mean Tyler Potley's their three man, he's about six nine. Well, they did stop it because the shot clock reset to 20, but because UConn, they said, had possession, was supposed to go back to 30. So that was the stoppage in the extra 10 seconds on the shot clock, and UConn has turned up the intensity. Yeah, you, you give up your dribble, they're going to be all over you. Nugent is hammered on the drive. Gaffney got him on the arm. To Nugent, senior from New Burton, New York. You're going to see a good job here on the drive and then just reaching right across his arm. 
is Gaffney. So Nugent, like a lot of the players on the Hawks, time at junior college. He spent a couple of years at Clarendon College in Texas. And that and that's the other part of this. We talk about Maryland Eastern Shore not playing in the 2021 season. But not only did they not play, but Coach Crafton told us they didn't have five on five at any point until July coming into this year. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, being a brand new program, really. You know what I mean? When you have that, take that much time off, you don't play any five on five. It, you got to give, give Coach Crafton a lot of credit. Now, I think he learned a lot of that stuff in my camp. I think so, too. I think that's where he learned. <laughs> now, he, he, he was very, very quick to point out <laughs> he that he quick. worked to Steve Lapis coaching <laughs> camps back in the summer of 99. I said, you know, summer of 99, I said, how old were you then, 12? I mean, I didn't hire 12 year olds. I mean, come on. He will be 40 in January. But he was, he was 18, he said. I, you know, we had him with the young kids for the day camp. Great guy. He's really going to do a tremendous job. All the way on the pull up. Wow. Good box out. Yeah, that was a great box out. Because I'm looking at the, not only are these guys big, but they're long. Long arms, long legs. So they take up a lot of space. A competitive first half. More than 11 minutes gone by. The guy's largest lead has been five. Tom London. Tried to draw the foul on a late whistle. Nathan Hall, the very late whistle on RJ Cohen was on the ground or in the air. I think it's on the ground. Definitely a foul. Oh, definitely. It was a foul earlier. It was a foul there to start with. So it was on the floor. What's impressed you the most so far? I'm impressed with the way that they've controlled the tempo of the game. They're not letting it get crazy. They've held their own on the glass for the most part. Alex trying to find some space. Muscled another one in. It's back to a two-point game. That kid's a much better inside player than I thought he was. You know, when you watch tape, it's very hard to tell. But, you know, he's very strong. Um, Pollard is strong. He's tough in the lane. He's a pretty good passer. He gives him at least somebody inside. He's the only guy who goes into the, in the post area. Right, and they're starting on Sonogo again. That comes to a tight great shot. Out. And another, that was Nugent that time. That was a great box out by Nugent. I'll tell you what, Coach Kraft has got these kids ready to play today. They had an early one-point lead, an opportunity to take it again. Nugent, the oh, three. I don't know about that one. Took Jason it down. Well, you talked about winning the four-minute marks. Gaffney on the pull-up. He drains the triple. You kind of wanted to shoot the three better. They did that very well against Auburn in that 115-point performance. Nine of 40 from beyond the arc though against Michigan State and VCU. Yeah, they've got a lot of a lot of weapons and a lot of guys that can shoot them. That's probably, I don't know where that was going. Don't thought he lost it. Maybe the shot clock was on him down. It's that three. Styles found Pollard under the basket with the shot clock winding down. You know what happens? Everybody kind of was ended up ball watching. So everybody's watching the ball and nobody's watching the guy cut from behind. It's hard not to watch the ball when you think it's about to float into the stands. It's a no-go. Great body control. UConn's leading scorer has got seven. You know, it's always great to see a team come in with a game plan. You know, Maryland East Shore didn't come in and just say, all right, we're going to go to the Plaza Travel, unfortunately, on fourth there. But they've got a plan, and they're trying to use their plan to get it done. And right now, five-point game. What a pass here. They fell asleep. Huskies up five. Give me something about, oh, we're playing UConn, they're ranked, big bad UConn national championship. They they didn't fight it at all. They were like, yeah, all right, so what? All right, well, right now, 
I gotta say their attitudes been pretty good. And the schedule too, right? I mean, we see this all over the country. Some of the smaller schools travel, hit the road a lot in the months of November and December. They've been at least 20 by games that have gone the other way. Right. At least 20. Well, and that's one of the things that UConn's been able to say this year is they didn't have any issues with those games early on. They won those first four by 41 points a game. If you're going to pay somebody, you better win that game. <laughs> I can tell you that. Great bounce pass back to Styles. Can't finish. He went hard at the rim, but Hawkins pulled it down. Pollard is called for the foul right in front of us. I thought he was in your lap. I thought so. I haven't taken a charge in quite some time, and it wasn't looking to take one now. See, I went to grab you. I know, I noticed that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Got to respect your elders. That's, that's, that's good. Oh, I need you for the next 25 minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> and know that the hell with them. <laughs> and the way you guys have played, I might need you for an extra five. Yeah. The way they've been playing overtime games of late. Cole with nine points on the drive. Good defense there. Really good defense. Tipped it out of bounds. Matt Potter says back to the Hawks. You know, the, the the thing so far, too, with Maryland Eastern, sure, they have four turnovers in this game. They've really been able to handle the ball. They haven't gotten destroyed on the glass, and that's why they're hanging in there. And UConn, UConn causes 18 turnovers a game. They force you to give the ball away. Your point about offensive rebounds, UConn only has two of those. I mean, if you told Coach Grafton before the game started that, you know, five minutes to go, they're going to have two offensive rebounds, he'd have been an unhappy man. Now some styles to the bench, and they are getting into the paint, too, not settling for the outside shots. I mean, they are, you know, the, the funny thing was, at the 10-minute mark, it was 12 to 2 points in the paint. Now it's 14 to 10 points in the paint. So that part of the game is changing. They're taking it to the basket. They're, you know, as UConn's getting a little antsy, they want to make some steals. They're gambling a little bit, and they're taking advantage of them by getting it into the lane. He scores a 79% free throw shooter. Back in the game for Hawkins, who started tonight, has two fouls. Just joining us, Tyrese Martin not playing. Has a left wrist injury, as Sherry Burris told us earlier, might keep him out for a couple of weeks. They're going to reevaluate that into the week. He played through that injury, which they said he hurt in the Auburn game. He played through it against Michigan State and VCU. And you know, that kid's a very important guy. He's a leading rebounder, so he's one tough guard. But. You can give him a month off before you really start getting into the Big East schedule. And he still has plenty of season left. It looks for Whaley. Well, their schedule starts to ramp up pretty quickly. Road trip to West Virginia, then St. Bonaventure before the 20 game Big East schedule. Could not finish at the rim. Those are those you gotta have. You gotta have those. Jackson and the double team, they stood their ground. And that's transition defense. I mean, UConn pushed that up, but guess what? The Hawks were all back. Travel. You can kind of see the energy in Zion Styles, right? Oh, no Every question. time he's down the floor, wants to do something with he, it, Sonogo's goes back he, on. He's thinking baskets. <laughs> that's a kid that's thinking about scoring every time he comes down the floor. And I'm just surprised we really have not seen them mix it up defensively. They played most, they play straight man basically the whole half. When you asked Coach Crafton about that earlier, he said, I, I wish we would have shown the box and one at Liberty. They get another takeaway. London at the bucket. And he tried to go underneath. Yeah, that was that. He needs to at least get fouled there. They got to get something on that. But again, they get back to transition defense. He was trailing the play. Yeah, and they were all back. I mean, they really are. They know what they want to do. It's one thing to know what you want to do, and it's another thing to go out there and do it. And they're doing it. No question. A bit of a surprise developing here tonight in Hartford. Good crowd on hand. I think they expected to see what they saw early in the season, and they have not gotten it. 4 on the shot clock for London. Gonna have to hoist one up, got it away, does not hit the rim. Pollard knew he had to throw it at the hoop, could not get it up there, but Crafton's team hanging with the number 17 team in the country.
Old Trapper. Be Getting those tight games. They were in three tight games over the weekend. And Michigan State, you know, it was a rough call there that they took that really hurt them. But, hey, all right, they lost the game. Close game. But two other close games, and they won them both. It helps to have that kind of experience. This has been the end of the floor that has kept the Hawks in this ballgame. They have played very well on the defensive end and especially on the glass. And they have not let Sonogo, other than the first possession, really get deep. Yeah, no, he was, again, he had to take like an eight-foot jump hook there. He's not able to get to that the restricted arc like he'd like to. Like Mensa getting his first action tonight. This is Chase Davis off the bench as well. Key minutes here in the last couple. This is going to be huge. It's the seventh. Here comes Jackson taking flight. I mean, that's a bad turnover because it was, it, that was just a fumble. It's the largest lead of the ball game, and you've kind of been feeling like they're hanging on, just hanging on, sticking around. They got to be careful because what they don't want to do is go into the locker room after playing a half like this down more than 10. That's what they don't want. Need a bucket here, more than three minutes without a point. Davis, the freshman, Whoa. big time jumper. Yeah, he's the only freshman on the team. Got a lot of new guys, but he's the only freshman. And he's played pretty consistently off the bench. Inside of two minutes in the opening half. And a lot of aggressive switching by the Hawks. Smooth. Now into double figures. RJ Cole with 11. 33 26. A UConn lead over Maryland Eastern Shore. This is a tough cover for Sonoma there. Out of control and a blocking call. On Sonoma. Now coming up. On AT&T at the half, our crew in New York, Brent Stover, Chris Walker, John Rothstein, standing by, get you ready on this one, plus what's going on around the country. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Big night for the Lapis household. I've got Steve with me. <laughs> the whole family is watching 31-year-old uh, head coach Pete Lapis for Fairleigh Dickinson at a uh, place that got your start at Manhattan. It's kind of weird. Like, Fairleigh Dickinson hasn't played Manhattan in 15 years. They're playing tonight. Just so happens, Greg Horenda... We want him to feel better. He's been struggling with a flu cold, no COVID related. And so Pete's been is coaching tonight, 31 years old, probably the youngest coach in the country. They're up by a couple too at Manhattan. So it's just ironic that it's, it's Manhattan of all people who gave me my first head job. Well, we'll see how his temperament is if this game gets close for him. We'll have the <laughs> camera on him somewhere. Someone does. This one, we've enjoyed a good one tonight. Just a five point UConn lead. Inside of a minute to go, Gaffney for three. That rattles home. UConn now with its largest advantage. And, and this has been methodical. They really have, you know, it's not like they're they're getting turning them over. I mean, the Hawks, Maryland's the sure is doing what they want to do. I mean, they're playing against guys that are better than them. There's no question. But that doesn't mean they can't win this game. Well, to hold the team that scores 88 points a game to 36 in the opening half. Davis into the corner. Need a bucket. Tensa for three. Oh. Tough shot. Well, I mean, that was well defended. You know, what are you going to say? Well, you said to play a half like this, you don't want to go into the locker room down 10. And Danny Hurley, who needs a bucket to get some momentum, takes a timeout because he just watched this. This is a heck of a shot there. These kids are hanging in there with the Huskies. The game plan is great. If you don't make any shots, the game plan, they can throw it out the window. So it's the, the rebounding has been good. The transition defense has been really good, and they're making some shots, and that's why they're in the game. And a lot of tough shots too. They did confirm it was a three. So 36-31, basically the same shot clock and game clock. You got to think they're going to go inside the Sonogo on this one. I want to foul here either. You don't want the way they play defense. Make Polly take it from deep, and he hit. Big shot. And that's what's going to send us to the locker room.
A game in which the Hawks have hung around the entire way, but probably three gives them an eight-point lead. Yeah, I mean, this was a tough shot. You tell me at the end of the half they're going to take a 27-footer. You say, all right, and he knocked it out. You got to give UConn credit, too. They did not lose their minds when this game wasn't really going their way. They kind of kept their point. When I was coaching, you rarely saw a mid-major or a low-major come into a building where it gets a big-time team and win. But now, like I said, there's been probably 20 bye games that have gone the other way. Crucial first couple minutes of the second half. And, you know, Tarleton State, that's, and that's Gonzaga, and that's one of the hardest buildings to play in in the world. Against one of the best teams in the country. Yes. And UConn thinks it has one of the better teams in the country. And certainly with what they did in the Bahamas against VCU and winning against Auburn. Had the lead late against Michigan State. Pollard had a very nice first half. And that's a good opening possession. He's got eight points. And you know, the first five minutes of this second half is, is always critical in the game. It's really critical for Maryland Eastern Shore to hang in here for the first five minutes of this uh, second half. This was basically a one or two possession game. The majority of that first half, that's a kickball. It'll reset to 20 seconds. But again, a good first possession for the Hawks. Well, I've been really impressed with Pollard. I mean, this kid, great footwork. They clear out the post. Naturally, you're not going to double him, but everybody's kind of standing around a little bit on that possession for UConn. He's above his season average. He's got eight here tonight. He averages six points a game. All at double figures in the first half. Wow. Huge block, Styles. Polly getting the start here in the second half. They said there was a change of possession, so they reset the, uh, reset the shot clock. Doesn't matter. Phillip with the takeaway. Cannot finish, but will go to the free throw line. I will, I will say this. We've only gone a minute and eight seconds, but UConn looks a little sleepy at the moment. Not what I would have expected coming out of the locker room. And that turnover... That's a great block there. But the turnover at the top of the key was another kind of lazy pass. So they about three points in the opening half. Go with a couple of rebounds. We only got to the free throw line six times in the first 20 minutes, which is a number you expect for a team that's an underdog on the road like this. They don't usually get to the free throw line that often as is, just 12 times a game. Splits the pair, back to a five point UConn lead. Now they're going with their one, two, two, three quarter court press. More of a nuisance than really looking for turnovers. A lot of teams will go man to man after that type of press. They're going back, they go back zone. They're going back man to man. Pollard, not Sonogo with the body down low. That is his second foul, and that'll send Adama Sonogo to the free throw line. But the aggressive nature of this Maryland Eastern Shore team and not backing down at any point has been extremely impressive. No, you know, they foul him. He's a tremendous free throw shooter, yep. 17 for 19 on the season. Naturally, I wasn't trying to do that either. Well, and he's one of the most improved players in college basketball. And he was very good last year as a freshman coming from Mali, where most of his family still resides. But you talk about that going from seven points a game up to 17 points a game as he hits both free throws. And they got it back, though, on the miss. But a blocking call. How about the fact, though, that Sonogo did not have a rebound in the first half? You know, he... His rebound, he's the third leading rebounder on this team. So, I mean, that, I got to think that that's an area that Danny Hurley would like to see him improve tremendously. So, he's not a, he's not as good a rebounder as he probably should be. And stop it here as well. It wasn't foul called. Given Styles. This has been the guy when they needed a bucket. He takes it to the rim, does not finish. Probably was a foul. Probably, but instead it's a leak out. Styles with the finish! 
Jackson was flying in, trying to get the block, and it's back to a one-possession game. Yeah, I thought, I thought Cole got fouled on that for sure. That should have been the fourth thing that I wanted to add for an upset. A good whistle. <laughs> you need a good whistle. Want a couple of bounces to go your way. Yeah. Hey, always helps to get a good whistle. That's a terrible shot. Good box out. Bob Maryland Eastern Shore has been trying to get back to the point. They did have a tie game. It was 11 apiece. They have been trying to get back there since. Terrible pass. Not a good look. And you know what? It was like a nonchalant, and then they stole it. Well, now they got a four on one, and Philip way to head. That hit the glass. That's goaltending. They'll count that. So this is a 7 0 run to start the second half for the Hawks. I mean, this is a serious finish. He thought he got fouled, too. I mean, look, not that he counts basketball shots here anymore. But Maryland Eastern Shore is 0 for all time against ranked opponents. They're in a one-point game three minutes into the second half against the 17th ranked team in the country. And the team that was picked to finish second in the Big East. Cole in the corner, trying to get the crowd to sit, and he does. First points in the second half. Boy, this guy is just money in the bank. But, you know, unless UConn starts turning them over a little bit, this is what you're going to get. You're going to walk it up. Wow. That's and hit baked in! What did I just say? <laughs> you said bounces. A good whistle and some luck. My that was some luck. Goodness. Polly can't answer offensive board. That didn't happen in the first half. Yeah, they've been more active on the glass. Four minutes into the second half, Maryland Eastern Shore with an opportunity to take the lead for the first time since the 12-minute mark of the first half. I give Danny Hurley credit. He hasn't lost his mind. A couple years ago, I think he would have lost his mind. Maybe he's still waiting for that Sage to kick in. <laughs> yeah. We'll explain that coming up in a couple of minutes. Great move for Styles and the kick out for three for Boyles. Ball oh, takes it to Luke. Wasn't fouled. Whaley was. And so UConn will be at the free throw line on the other side, but you said the shore had to get some bounces. Yeah, well, I know he didn't call this, that's for sure. But it helps. They're getting the bounces right now, too. Maryland Eastern Shore within one on the Huskies. They won those games by 40. Maybe <laughs> he shouldn't have done it. And you know, I'm Greek, so we believe in the Ides of March. So I, my mother used to give me, gave me a bracelet once that had the eye, evil eye on it to keep the evil eye. I should have wore it when I was coaching, and I didn't. That's why I'm here with what, you. What was your craziest pregame fit? I said ties. You know, I mean, I don't mean, you know, eating the same food, singing the same song. We used to sing songs at pregame meal. I, you know, we drink think anything. But I never heard about burning like sage or incense or something. It did smell nice. It did. Well, listen. and you know what's funny? All the people that you saw like work the workers, nobody was looking at him like he was crazy. No, they've seen it before. <laughs> Lost out of bounds. Whaley missed both free throws. UConn oh. is 0 for 4 at the line this half. That was great. Danny Hurley's team is 1 of 7 from the floor. They had a 7-point halftime lead. Check that, an 8-point halftime lead, which is down to 1. I've known Danny since he's probably, I don't know, nine years old, you know, because I used to go there and recruit when I was an assistant coach as a little kid. But uh, that's, that's unbelievable. I truly thought you were going to say you babysat. No, I did not babysat. <laughs> it would have been illegal. <laughs> Offensive glass, no. Bounce back to Whaley, fouled, and back to the line. Yeah, Dan's mother, Chris, you wouldn't want me to babysit that, you know. No, no, I wasn't good for babysitting in those days. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned it earlier that you're, you know, he has not lost his mind. He has completely kept his composure. Yes, he has. Ball. And I'm telling you, he lost his mind two years ago. I mean, there were a couple of calls that were a little, that one on RJ call. He didn't go nuts that he could have. In his fourth season here at UConn after leading Rhode Island back to the NCAA tournament after a substantial drought. 
Been there for a couple of years. And, and you know, Dan had that bad health scare a couple of years ago. And, you know, that you put some things in perspective. When he had that problem with his neck, I believe, which was a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Davis hit a big first half shot. And UConn looked like they had a chance to stretch it. The freshman getting some big minutes here in the second half. And another swipe. Boy, I tell you, that's what Isaiah Whaley does. He's such an important part of that team. He's like all over the place now. And he's not a, he's not a most talented guy, but he's one of their, Dan has said it, their most important guy. Oh, oh drive! Oh, oh my goodness! Oh. <laughs> this guy's, let me tell you something. My man Zion, he ain't that Zion Williamson, but he got a little Zion in him for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness, he did tell us. Yes, we that talked about it. I brought about his name. Like, did you know anybody? Yeah, there was a kid in my high school named Zion. Did you think anything of it? No, not really. Polly went back door. Great back cut there. That was good offense by the Huskies. Well, you walk into a gym, you never know what you're going to get on a given night. We have got something special tonight. Hey, Division One is Division One. Phillip on the pull up. No. Call the tremendous rebound. Here's where they got to be careful, though. Gaffney alley oop. See, that, they were able to keep that. Yeah, I think it's a good time for a timeout. He wants Styles to get it into the front court. The pressure and they'll get the timeout. I think that's a good timeout. They had it within one. Danny Hurley's team trying to get some buckets in transition, but it started with this. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Zion Styles gave everybody something to think about. But coming down the other way, the Huskies with the alley. Big. They got him the ball, but Maryland Eastern Shore never really got let him get close to the back. Exactly, Jason. They pushed him out. They made him take a little bit tougher shots than he wanted to. And, you know, the, the game plan for them is just stay in front of him. Make him shoot over you. Don't let him seal you off and get dunks and things like that. You've got to try to be more aggressive now. Davis, the block. And he was sitting out of bounds with the ball landing on top of him. That was UConn's best defensive possession of the game, by the way. They were very aggressive on this possession here. And a lot of it is keyed by that Isaiah Whaley. I see, I see the value that he has to Danny Hurley. Last year's Big East co-defensive player of the year. Has a couple of blocks tonight here in the second half. He brings that energy that you need. Remember, he was big in the win against VCU. He had not hit a three all year, and he hit three. Yeah, of them. that was on, and he made the biggest one of the game. Yeah, to go to overtime. Cole almost lost it. Gaffney with five on the shot clock. Well, they're boxing out. I mean, even that. Yeah, they got beat to that one, but they really are boxing out. Leave this guy alone. Big rebound there for Nugent. Well, the offensive board starting to pile up a little bit. For yeah, they, they, you know. Those are the effort plays that you got to start turning it on at some point. You can't try it now. Much more on the defensive end, longer in the half court. Kinsanya. Thompson outside. Another three. That goes. Mike Mensa's second three of the ball game. You know, they're getting contributions from everybody. He had made three triples in their first six games. He has two tonight. Has 14 points to lead the Huskies. Count on the foul. Strong move. Well, Maryland Eastern Shore left, not backing down. They make it tough shot after tough shot. They make it, still knocking them down. And, and you got to turn it up the heat, too. But this is a good move by Cole. And one. Huskies up four. This is a this is a significant step up in class from Fordham. No, you know, Kyle Neptune's gonna do a great job there, but this is his first year. And they, you know, all right, they beat Fordham, but I mean, this is a little different. These guys beat Auburn. I looked at Auburn and said, these guys have as much talent as anybody in the country. I mean, they got a guy who might be the first pick of the draft. They talk about Boncaro and Holmgren. <laughs> But uh, Jabari uh, Smith, yeah. he, he could be the first pick in the draft. And you got Kessler, or Walker Kessler. 
You got all of those guys <laughs> in the team that we will see coming up in a couple of weeks in person when they go on the road to St. Louis. Here, this is a crucial moment, right? We talked about four minute stretches. They, they've done a great job every single time out of the timeout. They have not been able to get back in front. They have to keep up with UConn, keep it a one two possession game. And UConn is trying to turn up the heat. Wide open. That's a great look out to London. And an offensive board for Nugent tracked it down. Thompson got an open look. He hasn't gotten free tonight. And he's one of their best shooters. He's probably their best pure three point shooter. Polly takes it at the rim. That they did in the first half. Maryland Eastern Shore got back in transition. Didn't do it there. Good strong move by Tyler Polly. He's mostly a three point shooter. That time he went to the basket really strong. He's given them 12 off the bench tonight. And yeah, this is a big possession here. Got Hawkins in the air in London, high off the glass and used all the rim. All that footwork, great job. Pivot, pivot, gets his man up in the air. Now they're trying the zone. I like it. Been calling for it, I might now change something up on you. Slow it up, maybe slow them down a little bit. They've been getting beat off the dribble. Travel. Ooh. Hey, you're lucky there. And that's exactly what Thompson was calling for. Instead, it'll be Sonogo to the line, who is now back in the game after trying to rub yeah. out whatever was bothering him. Great job of pivoting and stepping through. You got to hold your ground. I mean, Hawkins is a freshman. Got to hold your ground and keep this guy in front of you. He's got him locked up right here. He's got him. He's got him. Didn't have to jump there. Once he jumped, he was dead. Two shots for Sonogo, who missed a pair of free throws earlier here in the second half. Zion Styles back into the ball game has been great tonight with 11 points. Sonia back to the bench. To a seven point game. Now you can't come in with the full court pressure. Ryan is sending long. Thompson got tangled up with Sonogo, and that, he couldn't catch up. Yeah, nobody touched it, so they're going to take it out under the basket. Well, that was the other thing. You said they couldn't turn the ball over. Now they're, they're starting to pile up as well. Yeah. Well, UConn turning the heat up a little bit. That full court pressure. You would think at some point they're going to wear down a little bit. Because, you know, physically just not as strong. Tough kids, but just physically not as big. the drive. Oh, there's an offensive rebound and Sonogo to make him earn it. Now he's starting to plant himself down down there and he's you know he's a load to get out of there. I mean, you know once he's just stands in there with two feet it's a problem. Well the other part too is that is now 17 fouls on Eastern Shore and UConn at a 77% clip as a team this year. Get Pollard back in and foils as well. Colin Thompson, one of their better shooters, has not been able to get free tonight. Sonogo with eight points. Yeah, he was a guy that's, uh, you know, probably their best three-point shooter. Hasn't been able to get it going. Just them both. Tack back in! And Hawkins... Looked like he hit his head on the floor. He came flying in there to get the putback. Wow. I mean, the one thing you have to do is you've got to make sure it just wasn't a good box out. Well, and that gives UConn its largest lead of the ball game. And it happened pretty quick, very quick. Cannot have an empty trip here. Powell waiting 
Bowen, that is Tom Hawkins. Nathan Hall going over to talk to Danny Early. Hawkins third. It is just the second here on UConn in the second half. And the time to turn the corner. Couldn't get free. UConn putting a lot more pressure on the ball. Phillips trapped with two on the shot clock. Now Boyles has to shoot it. Got it off. And it didn't hit the rim. Shot clock violation. Give UConn credit. Great. You could see it the last five minutes. They've turned up the heat defensively. And that's just really good defense. They were kind of letting... Maryland, this is a good trap here. This is where you want to get somebody. And Cole threw it out of bounds. Wow. He said it was tipped. Now, that's, the, you know, that's uncharacteristic by Cole. I mean, to make a mistake like that. First of all, to stop there. When you see the trap coming, you don't want to do that. It's the worst place you can stop on the court. Now, did Coach Crafton learn that from Steve Lapis Camp, too? They yeah, might have. Paul has been really good when he's been running the offense, trying to find open players. They got to start getting something going to the basket like that. Phillip fouled and an opportunity for a three-point play. See, the one thing that they get, because they play basically with five guys out, the middle is wide open. You see it here. There's no one standing in the lane, so there's no help. And he's able to just make an easy drive. So Deshaun Phillip, one of the two players who was on the Eastern Shore roster two seasons ago when they played, remember, did not play last season. Came into the year, part of the third team all preseason. He's had a big second half, nine of his 12 here in the second half. And it's back to a two possession game. They've stuck with this man to man just about the whole day. They've tried a couple of possessions of his own. Hawkins got free. Hit a wide open triple. I like this kid. I think he's going to be a good player. Long, athletic. And remember, he got the start tonight with Tyrese Martin nursing a left wrist injury. Good bounce pass to Pollard. Could not find it. Whaley's long arms got in the way. And great help by Hawkins, by the way, on that again. That was really good defense. Came from the weak side. Helped on that roll to the basket. Cole might have sold it, and he'll get to the free throw line. Now, you talked about liking Jordan Hawkins. It's a nice stroke. Yeah, I mean, they leave him wide open here. I don't know. It was like a miscommunication. But he still got to make it, and he did. So I like what he did on the defensive end the next possession. He gave really good help. It looked like they were going to get beat on the roll, and he came from the weak side to help on the roller, and he made that steal. Cole's been the biggest scorer tonight coming off the 26 that he had against VCU, but Hawkins gave them great minutes against Auburn and Michigan State as well. Yeah. I mean, he made four threes on the season coming into tonight, so it's not, you know, he can shoot it. And guess what? He's going to get a real opportunity with Tyrese Martin now. Hit them both. Largest lead of the ball game. And you kind of feel it too up there. The, 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 of energy in the building too for a game that it was been this good to take a one-point lead and push it to 11 but they expected coming into the night oh yeah there's no question they're getting down to the end of the shot clock and getting it nothing the drive and it's stuck again it's the rating Defensive player of the year in the conference making a play at the rim. That's why Danny Hurley loves Isaiah Whaley so much. That is a clean, great block. UConn on a roll here.
Watch a little bit. And because that rebounding, not as good in the second half. This was an eight-point UConn lead at the half. Maryland Eastern Shore cut it to one. 44-43. Since then, the Huskies have spurred it to an 18-8 lead. Some of that at the free throw line. They've gotten a couple of open looks. They stopped turning it over themselves. Now an opportunity here. Try to get a little bit more breathing room. Yeah, they just got to stay solid on defense and just rebound. Whaley has been great tonight on the defensive end. Cuts back door and he's fouled. And they're in the bonus, so a one and one coming up for the Huskies. You know, Danny, he'll take out Sonogo, he'll take out all these guys. He doesn't take out Whaley, he doesn't take out Cole. Those two guys are the constants. One of you ask him, hey, uh, this year progresses the most important players. You mentioned a couple of them. Uh, but, I mean, Tyrese Martin's not playing tonight. He's one of them, too. Oh, he's a very important guy. I mean, these guys, he's a guard. He's 6'5 guard. He's the leading rebounder. So, I mean, he's a tough kid. He can make threes. So, they, you know, they need all their pieces. Now, that's one spot they have not been good tonight. A 77% free throw shooting team, just 9 of 17. A foul away from the ball. It's going against UConn. That is only the fourth on the Huskies. It's on Andre Jackson, his second. He's another kid who's got talent. He's got to find his way. Wow. Uh, it could have been a flop, actually. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe from my angle, he got hit harder than I thought. I'm not sure. Howard almost lost the ball, almost traveled, got blocked, batted around, and guess who's under there? It's Whaley again. And still Bob loose. Pollard's got it. Wants a timeout. He's going to get a jump ball, and it's going to stay with Maryland Eastern Shore. And by the way, Jason, they're one of the best shot blocking teams in the yep. country. They're like top 10 in block percentage, so this is what they do. They make it very hard to score around the rim. Almost eight block shots a game. Tonight, just four. That Rhode Island team, by the way, with the Mitchell twins. At the rim, on the rim, on the rim. They could block some shots. You were there. You saw like, a, did he have like 11 that night or something crazy? 14. Oh, excuse me. I remember that game. Is it the, that was the first time they played BC. Four on the shot clock. Pollard knows it. Got him in the air. And a foul on Whaley will send Nathaniel Pollard to the free throw line. And that, with two seconds on the shot clock, gets a little head scratch. He has played very well this season. The senior out of Richmond, Virginia, has been very impressive tonight, Matt. Yes, I absolutely. He's been tough. And, you know, that's one thing they probably established tonight. They probably found themselves a guy who can uh, score in the, po in the paint because, really, they have it. They, they need one inside guy. He can score in the lane. And I got to think when they get in their league play that he's going to be able to do some damage. Size tonight at a disadvantage when they play in the game. Yeah. It's a little bit different. Way story. different. A lot of teams play with guys who are 6'5", 6'7", 6'1", 6'2". That's what they trot out every night. Polly with an open three. Great rebound for Voiles. Still six and a half minutes. They don't oh, no. worry, but they need good possession. No, no, they got plenty of time. They just need to, you know, they don't have to rush. They just got to, like you said, have good possessions. This is their most explosive play. Styles split the defense. Another One of the foul. Yeah, didn't get anything. They got it back, and they got the two. Yeah, UConn really converging on the rim now. Kind of a miss, got mismatches all over the place now with these switches. No one make Polly earn it at the strike. Well, they didn't get the call on the uh, drive into the bucket, but they did get the bounce afterwards. I mean, that was a good no call and just ended up in his hands. Boyles lays it in.
Also, those substitutions with Gaffney coming back onto the floor as well. Well, once again, a kick, quick break, so too will Styles. You know, as UConn moves on the rest of the season, and again, playing tonight without Tyrese Martin, but what do they need to do as this year goes on to accomplish where they think they can go with an experienced roster? Well, I mean, I think they have all the pieces. It's a matter of them just being consistent, especially on the defensive end. Now, you know, you, it's tough. This is a tough game. They come in, they're playing an overmatched opponent. They're coming off the trip to the Bahamas. I, if you ask, I said it to you before the game, I think they're going to be a little flat tonight. And they were a little flat. I think once, you know, the Big East rolls around, and it gives Merrill Lee some credit about the way they play. But I think this is a very, very good UConn team. I think a lot depends on... Another tough shot. I think a lot depends on Sonogo and him having the high motor every night because yeah. he's the guy who's capable they might have found something mike mensa three triples tonight equaling his season total this is the spot they got to get a stop as we approach five minutes to go in the ball game yukon has led the whole second half but it was a one-point game about seven minutes in Cole step back difficult shot rolls wow. in that was a really tough shot he had two guys on him I thought that when he shot it, I was like, well, it's a bad shot. Goes in the basket. A 20-point performance for RJ Cole. He's got 21 tonight. His third in the last four games. See, that time Cole stayed on the ground. Another three. Career night. Mike Mensa in a big spot having his best ball game. Threes is starting to mount up too. He's got a career high. It's back to two possessions. And Sonoma not in the game. Maybe he's not feeling great. Sherry told us earlier his nurse. Oh, what a move. Side. What a move. How's it go? Inside of four minutes to go. Ball game here in Hartford. I like their patience in the half court. When they haven't had anything, now they've had a couple of bad possessions that have run to shot clock violations, but they've controlled this in, the, in this end of the floor. Well, can they find the hot hand? Can they get it to Mensa? Instead, it's Davis. Oh. Tough shot. My goodness. All of a sudden, they're going wherever they want with the ball again. And you know, this crowd's got to start giving these Huskies something. You can feel a sense of nervousness. Oh, there's no question. Holly was bumped into the corner. Can Hawkins hit another triple? Starting to get tight. And you know, this team makes it really hard. They, they're being very patient in the half court. Any mistake you make, they're taking advantage of. This is the recipe for an upset. Phillip on the drive. High floater. Doesn't get it to go. Cole on the leak out. Two on two. With a bucket. No. Well, who else? You need a play. Go to the tough guy, but the Hawks, for the first time ever, trying to beat a ranked opponent. While they're making all kinds of shots, they were down 12, down 11, now all of a sudden, back to four. A little bit, and this morning, Coach Hurley did tell us he is major. The major concern for his team is fatigue coming off that trip to the Bahamas. Yeah, no question. And again, playing without Tyrese Martin, hurt his wrist in the game against Auburn, played the other two in the Bahamas, but they were concerned about the fatigue. They played multiple overtime games, two of the three. And here tonight, Coach Lapis, Danny Hurley's team has been in an absolute fight that nobody saw coming. You know, they played three hard games in three days down there, very physical type games. And I guess, you know, there's a, uh, hey look, they're still up six now. But they've got to really buckle down in the half court defensively. This team is playing with five guys out. And it's not that easy because, you know, that UConn's playing small now. Well, they're not real small, but they don't have, you know, Sonogo, obviously, in the game. But they're having trouble guarding these guys five out. Deshaun Phillip 
One of their two holdovers from two years ago when they last played a season. Turn the corner, and he's fouled. And you see it, they, they clear it out. There's no one in the lane. And then they're just holding it, holding it, driving it, and making things happen. And if you're just joining us, we've talked about this tonight. They had a road win at Fordham, their first non-conference road win in five years. Can they follow that up with their first ever win over a ranked opponent? I mean, obviously, if they could pull this out, it would be huge, but it would be a really bad loss. But you got to make those. Yeah, no question. Well, you're talking about huge. How huge? The Maryland huge. Eastern Shore has had one winning season since 1994-95. You know, a home loss to a team that's, I don't know, maybe this team is not going to be in the fourth quadrant. I don't know. You know what I mean? The season is young, but this could be a fourth quadrant team. You're losing at home to them? Can't do that. Yeah. Pick to finish last in the meet. But again, they didn't play last try. Right. It's hard. It's hard to say what they should be. Two possession game. Two on the shot clock for Cole, and he gets a whistle with one on the timer. That was a bad foul because he was going to take a tough shot there. Oh man, I don't know. Not sure about that one. The fifth foul on Thompson. So, is that one of those when you were at Manhattan, if you were playing someone in the Big East, you would have been screaming about? Oh, yeah. I would definitely have been screaming about that one. So, Thompson tonight. They came in, they are excited about his ability, maybe to give him points off the bench. Gave him 18 minutes, but Cohen Thompson went scoreless. He fouled out, now R.J. Cole at the line. And we were just informed by Sherry that Damas Sonogo is out for the rest of the ball game, a lower abdominal strain. So we'll see where this game goes, but he will not be part of it. I was just talking with the training staff. Cole hits them both back to an eight-point lead. These guys got to go a little bit faster now. They've got to really attack this basket. And just been their best shooter. He's at wow. the bottom of the screen. It was fast. Didn't hit anything. That was and bad. Out of yeah, that didn't need that. You needed something going to the basket in this situation here. Certainly not a pull up from 28 feet. Yeah, it was. I wouldn't foul yet. Play one more possession. Solid. UConn, hold the ball as long as you can. Get the ball in Cole's hand at the end of the shot clock. And we're thinking about who to follow when you get down that conversation. Gaffney's only a 70% free throw shooter, but he's the worst free throw shooter on the floor. Whaley turned around, couldn't get it to go. Now you got to run. You got to push it now. This is not time to walk. The game plan was great, but now the game plan got to change. Well, now they're inside of a minute to you go. They want to win the game. The game plan's got to change. Well, they do have two timeouts. They don't have a ton of time. Got to get a bucket. Styles steps back for three. That's off. And now, now you, you got to foul. foul. You got to foul. If you're not going to try, unless you're not trying to win. Yeah, I'm shocked that they didn't go in the backcourt and foul. Him. I mean, look. They should have. There was 40. There were 49 seconds to go, and they got that rebound. Can you foul now? He, now, now you got to like kick one, wow. so it'll reset the shot clock to 20. Yeah, I would foul now. I told my son this the other day because he asked me, All right, "What about in this situation?" I said, "If you're down 10 with 30 or more, you try one foul. If you're down 10, less than 30, maybe you run, let it run out. If it's more than 30, you got to foul." Well, and this was an eight-point deficit when they got the defensive rebound. It was about 55 seconds to go. Yeah, I mean, they now, I mean, that, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. I mean, <laughs> it makes no sense. I said if you're down 10 and 
you more than 30, you should foul. But to, to do that now and not to do it when there was 50 seconds to go, right. that makes no sense. Well, he was he was screaming at his players to trap near midcourt. So I think Coach Crafton was hoping for, for a turnover. But instead, if you're down four in that situation, maybe you play it like that yeah. for, for a steal. If you're down eight, you can't play for the steal. you got to foul right away with 49 seconds to go. You're down four? Yeah, okay, I give it a shot at a trap. But down eight, you got to find it. All right, now it's down ten. And now they're going to get a timeout. One remaining for Maryland Eastern Shore. They've been in it all night, but time's about to run out. The way they played and the teams they played, he was a little bit worried about how they'd come out tonight, and they have... Got in a fight all night long, but uh, barring a miracle, they're going to escape tonight with a win over yeah, the Hawks. Yeah, but you know, again, that's what you didn't want to do with your UConn. Well, you set up your, you hopefully make two here if you're Maryland Eastern Shore. Set up your press. Yep. Follow one more time, see what happens. And there's a one and one. Jake Davis, who has only been to the free throw line five times this year. What were you going to say about UConn, though, Rob? I was going to say that, you know, if you're a good team, you got to win games when you don't play well. And, you know, they didn't play great tonight. But it's not over yet, so I don't want to say, but these are the kind of games you got to win if you're good. You got to win games sometimes when you don't play well. Kind of like the VCU game. Now, VCU is more talented team than Maryland Eastern Shore, but they didn't play well against the uh, uh, VCU and they got away with the win there. But they're going to have to play better than this. Does not get the second. It's tapped out of bounds and it's back to UConn. So they didn't foul. They let 25 seconds come off the clock. Then they fouled with 32 seconds. Yeah, you like to say, well, what would have happened if we fouled, you know, with 49 seconds to go? Yeah, man. And looks like we're going to the monitor to make sure that this is actually UConn basketball. We'll step away for 30 seconds. And so an opportunity here. You can get a quick shot, get a quick bucket. And Maryland Eastern Shore does hey, still have one timeout left. You make it three, timeout. But... It speaks again to the fact that why didn't you foul 49 seconds ago? Got to get it inbounds. He has made four triples tonight. Mensa. Rebound is tapped around. Inside of 20 seconds to go. Davis to the hole. Whaley another block. And that's going to end it. And Whaley's tough. Well, UConn given all it can handle tonight by a gutty performance from Maryland Eastern Shore, but the Huskies are going to leave Excel Center with a nine-point win. Yeah, I mean, they got, again, you're a good team. You got to win when you don't play well sometimes. They didn't play best. They're good. Tonobo didn't play that good, but they still came away with the win.